Hey everyone, welcome to the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends After Dark. Uh, my name is Scott Switzer. I am your host and I'm the Clydesdale. Uh, my friends are Amy and Kat. And we have back again special guest, Jenny Borda. Hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Good, hey. how are you? Uh, I hear that we now finally found out who the fittest man and woman are in the world. Finally. Finally. Huh. Yep. We didn't. What a surprise. Nail biting. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the games have, have ended. We know who the fittest man and woman are. Um, but we're just, I'm going to go over some general things that I kind of saw between day two and day three. And I watched the press conference this morning. And one thing that uh, just kind of I thought was odd were that people always seem to like tell Matt what it, they think his strategy is in events. And his answer always comes back much more simplified than what they make it out to be. Have you ever known? And like, whenever anybody asks him. Do you have an example? What do you talk? What do you mean? So um, I think today someone was like in, and I can't remember the events, um, the, the bike race, you know, mm -hmm. that you had a strategy of just kind of keeping people close and until the end and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and you geared up and geared down at the right times. Did you practice that ahead of time? And he's like, uh, I was just playing with the gears till it felt right. And I was going on my own and I didn't even know anybody was there until the end. Yeah. You know, it's, it's never like what people make it out to be. I just think it's, it's funny. <laughs> I also think sometimes he makes it sound like he doesn't know people are there, but he looks around an awful lot I'm to sorry. not know that where, oh. where people are. <laughs> He sure does. But he does say that. I'm just running my own race and doing what I think I need to do. But like, he's always peeking and looking. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys follow Craig Ritchie. Mm -hmm. Did you see that every time Matt turns back to look, he adds a fart noise yeah. to the video? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh, makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> then I also, um, Noah was asked a question about, uh, the one event he did really well in yesterday, um, I can't even remember what that was now, uh, but he's, oh, it was a trail run. He had done so much better in the trail run than he did in year in 16. Mm -hmm. And was he happy with that? And he was very specific about that. He was happy with that event alone um, and made a point that it was just that event that he was happy with. <laughs> Everything else has been pretty rough for old Noah. And then um, uh, I thought I, that's what we learned that two weeks ago that the demo team did the entire weekend start to finish so that they could find out exactly how the athletes would respond, not just to event by event, but the entire weekend. And so I thought that was pretty cool. And then the whole thing about Matt being the underdog. And his answer is that I'm always the underdog because I never know what they're going to come up with. I never know if I'm going to have a bad day and they're going to have their best day ever. And so I always feel like the underdog. It's just like he doesn't know when people are close to him. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so did you guys have seen anything that you uh, enjoyed over the weekend from day two to day three? There wasn't as much content from day two to day three as there was from day one to day two. I agree. Like I woke up today, like kind of like bored, not super excited for it because I was just like, eh, like I just didn't feel like anything was that exciting. But then I, once I announced the final event, I was super excited to watch that because it was a longer event. It was going to just be more content. They were going together. So I just think that added a, you know, some different, flares to the to the competition to end today but um yeah i mean i was excited yesterday but this morning i was just like yeah you know i think it just gets less exciting when one person's person's running away with it and i was talking to some friends yesterday about this um i wish also like when tr matt are winning 
sometimes I wish they would just take the camera off of them some of the time. Cause if the race is really for second or third, or, you know, you want to see people struggling on their thrusters or you kind of want to see how that's playing out instead of watching someone get a water bottle and like sit. And I feel like for me who loves competitive CrossFit and I've watched all of the games since probably 2012, like, I, you like when it's a race, like when Rich was dominant, he wasn't dominant the whole weekend and you still feel like there was a contest and is he going to lose it? And it like keeps everyone a little more excited. So I would agree. I don't think it was, I, even though I watched all the events live and I'm excited yeah. to watch them, it's not the same excitement because it's, and this year, I think it was maybe less exciting because when it's only five, there's also not a ton of people slipping in there. Yeah. So there's not a lot of room for like big shifts to be happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like even though that, like the points from like second to fifth would flip up and down, it started to seem less like big changes were going to happen, especially with today. Yeah, I kind of, I guess I just changed my focus today. Um, one, there's a swimming event, so that's going to get me excited because uh, that's my expertise and what I know about. Um, and two, that in that second through fifth, there are people I like and there are people that I don't like so much. And so, it, I had a rooting interest in who was going to finish where in two through five. Uh, so I, I guess I just, even though the cameras didn't change the focus, I changed my focus to see who that was. So were you pleased with the outcome? Uh, on one side, yes. On the other side, okay. not so much. Okay. Um, so let's go to event 10. My, my favorite event. Um, it was um a 10 or 15 calorie assault bike uh into a 50 meter swim 10 ghds 10 d balls d ball cleans and jerk or slams i don't even know what they called it they called they them slam called balls but balls. yeah they were called ball it, slams but it looked they were, it was like ground overhead, overhead. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um and then on the even rounds you did that in reverse and it was uh, four minute intervals, total, total time elapsed on your time in, in the event uh, was the winner. And so I, w I was really excited about it. One, I'm really good at assault bike. I'm really good at swimming and uh, not so good at GHDs, but slam balls are okay. And so what, what I loved is that um, it's so funny. Tia is the perfect swimmer. If you have ever been a competitive swimmer, her stroke is completely balanced. She breathes on both sides. She gets no drag from the opposite arm of the breath. It is, it is picture perfect. And so her effort to get across the pool is so minimal. Like Haley has a really good glide, but her, her breath starts to get high. And when your breath gets high and you you lean, your opposite shoulder dips into the water and creates more drag. And as long as her levers are at this point and, and they're not very big, she should be able to be smooth with long pools and be able to keep up with Tia. It's just a technique thing. And, if, and it, it's all if she would breathe on both sides. So breathe left, three strokes, breathe right, three strokes, breathe left. And I think she would have been right there with Tia. Because their kicks are almost identical, um, their their stroke mechanics are pretty close. Uh, it's just that Tia stays very straight in the water, and everybody else does that tilt. And on the men's side, it gets I was really bad. At how, yeah, I was surprised at how much ground um, Tia made up every time she got in the pool. I mean, she'd be behind people and then was, you know, two, three, four lengths ahead by the, by the end of that 50 meters. That was impressive. So much better. Yep. Yeah. On the men's side, they breathe so high that their, their off arm is shortened. Like they shorten the stroke mm -hmm. and it's only about a third of a normal pull. Cause it's really bad on that side. They're, they're gasping for air every chance they get. And as fit as they are, they should be able to take three strokes before a breath and stay more relaxed. Yeah. So on the guy's side for that one, um, Sam Quant won the event, right? So Matt in surprising fashion lost. Now Matt had a no rep on one of his slam balls. And I'm wondering if he hadn't, how much closer things would have been. Cause I didn't see any other 
sort of missed that. Oh, and he was, he was stumbling with the ball a little bit. Like he lost his grip on the ball a few times. Matt did. I think when he was first your... trying to do those touch and goes, like then he like yeah. wasn't totally sure. So it was interesting to see, but I was, I was super stoked for Matt, uh, for Sam. Yeah. I think their wetness played a lot of, played a lot into that, not only on the D balls, but on the GHDs trying to not slip and slide back and forth on this, on the seat. Yeah. It had to be like a lot more controlled getting in and out, I think on those and an assault bike with no shoes. Ow, that kind of, right? as soon as I saw that, I was like, Ooh, that's, and those assault bike are, you know, the assault bike's different than the echo bike. Like those pedals are they're a little sharp. cushy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're sharp. I wouldn't like that. Yeah. Mm-mm. I just learned today, I was this many days old when I learned that the numbers that they assign the athletes um, are the last, are the first year that they won the games if they had won the games and they're not just 101, 102. Because I was like, wait a minute, why does Matt have a 16 on his bathing cap, you know, and on his shorts and everyone else has like a 102, 103? Because I know what, I know what that is. Like it's your ranking number. Um, but then I saw Katrin with a, I don't know, a 16 or a 15 or whatever. I was like, ah, now I know why. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Back in the old days, like, anyone else was wondering when, when there weren't like multiple year champions, you had a lot of them like Sam Briggs had a 13 and, and Annie had an 11. Somebody else had and, a 14. Yeah. 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 So it was a lot easier to notice a few years ago than it is today because there's not many left. Right. You only see Matt and Diaz. <laughs> right. Nobody else's. <laughs> well, and um, just to finish up on event 10, Sam finished uh, with a loud burp into the mic oh, uh, that, that I think yeah. that, that they didn't realize they were catching. Uh, so he must have swallowed some water along the way. Uh, and uh, that reacted pretty loudly um, at the close of the event. <laughs> Yeah, and it seemed like um, it seemed like Haley Adams was the only female that was doing that sort of the true slam ball technique, which was noticeably slower in her cycle time than like Katrin being next to her. And I was sort of a little bit yelling at the TV, like just pick it up and put it down. <laughs> don't don't throw it. Um, and then I got nervous too because her chip timer malfunctioned. It seemed like after that, maybe the first round or the second round. Yeah, second and, round. Um, you know, with the timing being so precise in, in this event, you know, you see Boz like checking the judges um, clipboard and I was like, oh no, the, you know, the chip timer is not working. So that was, uh, that was a source of anxiety for me as I was watching. So then we move on to 11, which is, uh, as we, I think we called last night, the event that took the most controversial events from last year and combine them into one. Mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah. the uneven slide on the sled and the people crossing the line on the sprint, let's make that one event. And on the men's side, that might have been the most exciting event of the weekend. Um, everybody used the old Noah technique on the men's side where they lifted it up a little bit uh, and pushed it. Um, Sam was right with Matt. Matt kind of got ahead of, or Matt caught him on the sled. And when they turned, it was an all out sprint back. And they ended up finishing 0.4 seconds apart from each other. And I think the photo finish was even closer than the chip timer. So I don't know if Sam like used the wrong foot to lead or, or Sam's what non chip foot crossed like at the same time. Yeah. As Matt. And that's, chip and when foot. you're sprinting like that, you, you can't, can't really change your foot. control. I guess <laughs> right, you could try to slide. Is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was, sorry. that was exciting. I mean, Matt looked like he was pulling away and then Sam was able at the end and they both at the very end looked like they could maybe fall down. I thought they both looked a little like stumbly. I was like, Ooh, Matt, Matt looked like he pulled a hamstring <laughs> yeah. in, in his interview and he was, yeah. he was stumbling away. So yeah, we thought that might've ended his day. Yeah. And uh, Sam's first, maybe five steps looked like a baby deer. Mm -hmm. And then once he got it under him, he, it, that's when he started to take off. He's a strong dude. And on the yep. women's side, Tia just was Tia. <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, she's just so good. Like, 
And did Brooke not do as well as we expected her to do in that one? She was second, I think. She, she yeah. did get second? Okay. I believe so. She didn't get lost on that one. <laughs> yeah, she was second. Yeah, and she went out fast. She was ahead of Tia, um, mm -hmm. got to the sled first, and then Tia passed her on the sled. And then there just wasn't enough room to catch Tia back on the sprint. On the sprint. And there were no lines for her to step on. Right. Good, good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that could have been bad. Um, and what I liked about what, when they asked Matt why he still goes all out when he had essentially locked up the title, he said, I want to see what I'm capable of. If I don't, I'm just wasting all the training I've put in over the year. But, okay, I believe that, but I would like to say that I don't think he went all out on the last event. Oh, for sure not. Oh, no, no. No. He still yeah. won. This was be... I know. Be... I know. Like, looking <laughs> Isn't at Carrie, that crazy? Carrie Pierce's time, like, I would have loved to see what Matt would have done if he would have been all out on that. Mm -hmm. Or Tia. Yeah. I'm not saying what they did, like, I think what they did was wrong. Like, I just was interested to see what would that, what would that have looked like if it was an all out Matt and Tia kind of event. So, so since you've taken us there. Okay. Uh, the final event at Atlantia, what Dave Castro promoted as the hardest event ever at a CrossFit Games was one mile run, 100 handstand pushups, 200 pistols, 300 pull-ups, and another mile run with weighted vest of 14 and 20. And so it was a mix of Murph and Mary. And so my first question to you guys is, you know, he got a lot of crap for programming Mary last year. Do you think this was a stick it in your face Castro back to say, I'm programming it again? Maybe, I think part of his, uh you know, thing with getting it last year was that it was 20, it was just a 20 minute AMRAP, which is like boring to watch. Not that, and I even think this was a little bit that way. Like I think when it gets monotonous and there's so much in a row, it can be a little bit boring, but it is interesting to see like how people break it up and the capacity. Um, but that's definitely something he would do. Oh, you don't think we should program this? Watch what we're going to do. <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Outside of rebounding box jumps. I do think that, uh, they got to a point that they were like, I don't think we want to test this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, too many Achilles. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I think sadly what made this a little more exciting was like the people ripping. It yeah. just, it changed, it changed the pace of everything. And so it made you, so one of the people like I was rooting for was Haley. And when she ripped, I mean, it was just, it was sad because she was right there and then it just kept falling off. And you saw the blood on her shorts and you saw the blood on Brooke shorts and Samuel Quant in the award ceremony had green tape over both hands. Um, so it must've been a mess for those, those few athletes. I was worried there was going to be rhabdo happening with all those reps. My goodness. Jeez. Oh, well, wait 24 hours and see what happens. I was going to say, you don't, you don't know yet what really well, happened. Right. But I guess since we've had the demo team go through True. correct that gives yeah. us a little bit of insight i think correct yeah. yeah correct and speaking of demo team we talked before we went on air i texted um saxon to find out what his thoughts of this event were since he tested it um and he said it was a lot of fun <laughs> and i texted back like that is not what i expected and he texted back and said it was fun for me what can i say and then he put laugh faces i was like okay you just got to have that mentality if you want to be that good, right? I mean, there has to be a component. And I will say there are people who would, I mean, games athletes that are good games athletes that would hate that workout. But I would say Saxon likes gymnastics. And so he did probably like that one. Like it's fun to do stuff you're better at. And it's fun to test your capacity on things that you feel like you're good at. And he's so, a decent runner. Yeah. Yeah. So I, w I like, wonder how I many, say how many athletes will see try it. <laughs> <laughs> that middle part's fun. The runs, eh, I'm out on the run. But so the rest that, would be fun. <laughs> yeah, what was that, Kat? I was going to say, I wonder, you know, at the end of this, how many um, athletes will see testing this workout just, just for fun. Not like like elite athletes, not 
you know, I'm not going to go to the gym tomorrow and do it, but be curious to see, you know, who, who gives it a shot. Cause it's sort of like, you know, the gauntlet's been laid down. Yeah. And the announcers kept saying like, don't try this at home, but you know, yeah. Ricky's going to do it. You know, I was talking to, I was talking to Dex earlier, Dex Hopkins. And he said, you know, that that event was brutal. And he said he loved how Chase every five seconds was like, please don't try this at home. Cause you know, Tex, uh, Dex is a coach at his gym too. And he's like, I, I'm going to die if, you know, gyms start programming it or like, you know, Hey, let's train for it. Like the marathon row, right? Like everybody wanted to do the marathon row. And we kept having to tell people like, you need to train for the marathon row. You don't just do the marathon row. And even then don't do it. <laughs> even if you train for it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. So at the end of the day, uh, it was Matt and Tia. Um, I think Matt won all but two and Tia won all but three. So she went 10 of 13, Matt went 11 of 13. Uh, I'd say that's a pretty dominant performance uh, at the games. Uh, what, what I kind of wonder about is, you know, as a sports fan of all sports, um, you know, they keep talking about Matt has the most wins of anybody ever. This year it's not really fair to count all those wins because you don't, you don't have that big populace of people to kind of fit in the middle or specialists that are good at certain things. So I would, I would almost believe that it was easier for him to win all those events this year than it would be to do that on a, on a normal games year. He still would have won though. Yeah, oh, he would have won the Yeah, game. yeah, he would have won the event. Sure, the whole games. But yeah. to win like 11 of 13. Oh, is, yeah. Isn't, I don't isn't think he happen. really cares about that record or whatever, you know, whatever that is. Did you hear what he what he said he's going to do with the event winnings? No. No. He he always wanted an El Camino. Oh. And so he's going to take all the checks from the event wins to buy himself an El Camino. For him. Perfect. <laughs> Is that before or after he announces his retirement? Yeah. What do you think, Jenny? Do you think he's going to retire? Okay. No. I don't. I, I, I do. I, I kind of oh, lean to the, the cat on this one because, you know, totally the way Tia reacted about getting to spend all the time with Shane and Matt this year and then start crying. And then um, what did Matt say? Life talks. We're going to have to some travel, some travel I mean, and have some life talks. What, how about every time he's won in the past, he said things like training for the 2020 game starts tomorrow, right? Doesn't yeah. he, he always says that. Like They're like, well, what are you going to do? Well, training starts tomorrow. He didn't say that this year. He said yeah. he's going to take some time and go on a trip. And you heard it here first, folks. He's retiring. He's going to have babies. That'd be interesting. He's done. Ending on and a I high note. Yeah. So and I'd between, be okay with it. Like I said, I get real bored. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it's time to see what the young, young generation has. And, um, you know, Justin was with him on a lot of events and he gets another year older and another year of training. Who's, who's to say? Yeah. Super exciting for, for him and Haley. So I, uh, I watched the Buttery Bros between event 11 and 12. And just a couple notes on this is they were making fun of Sean Woodland uh, that because of there was only one heat in every event, he didn't even have to use a lozenge or, or a throat spray to get through the weekend. And Heber said, you must have used your wow stack. And Woodland was going, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I do that warm up all the time. <laughs> and it was really funny. And, uh, and then at the end of day two, Eric Rosa wanted to do that uh, happy star. Yeah. And Heber and Marston jumped in. Love it. Uh, as well as the chief of staff um, at CrossFit Inc. And they did it and Marston won and Rosa was last. Yeah. But that is something you would never have seen with the old CEO. Yeah. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> yeah. No way. Well, and I think Eric's probably what, almost 20 years older than, than those guys too. So, and they did it with, they did it with the finish. women's weights. Yeah. Yeah. All four of them. Uh, but yeah, I actually thought Heber would beat Marston on it, but Marston won. 
So by like seven seconds. Oh, yeah. close. Mars, yeah. Mars had him on the thrusters probably. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, so the podium ended up on the men's side with Matt, Samuel Quant, and Justin Medeiros. Uh, on the female side, it was Tia, Katrin David's daughter, and Carrie Pierce. So any thoughts about, I guess, first of all, Carrie Pierce, the first American female on the podium since Julie Fouché? Yeah, I, I think you that makes total have, sense. you were going to have one. Yeah, yeah. I think it being her it was it was appropriate, right? I mean, she's been Fifth, the twice. U.S. top. No, I mean, she's been top of the open in the U.S. for the last, you know, three years or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I, I, yeah, it made sense. I, ta- I got a chance to talk to Ryan Eldrod, too, who trains with her in Vegas. Um, and he's just like over the moon excited. We talked yesterday. Um, no, sorry, we talked Friday night. And he was saying how, you know, she needs to set herself up so that she can go into day three and really make a move. And he was just, I mean, she had, she let it all go in that last event. Like she gave it her all. I and I mean, I've to watch her go like threes and fours on pull-ups. You're like, what is happening? You know, like that is just not something you see her doing. And then when she went out on that run, it was like, she's going to do it. It was really, it was exciting. I'm happy for her. Yeah, I liked how Chase is like, she needs to run like somebody's chasing her. Yeah. And she yeah. did. She she got enough she distance where mentally Katrin wouldn't be able to see her for a while. And I think yeah. that's where she got she got that lead and kind of was able to keep it. And that's when you wonder too, like there's this whole gamesmanship or strategy where, you know, Katrin had second place lined up, right? If she beats Carrie, she takes third place away from Carrie, but her placement doesn't change at all. And you just wonder. Like there's only five of them. They all know each other. I'm sure some of them like each other. Some of them don't like each other. Like, is there any kind of gamesmanship you can play to make the outcome differently? Like Tia could have held back and let Haley beat her. And if that's the case, Haley gets third, right? Like there, there needed to be two places in between. It's, you wonder sort of how that all works out. And if Haley hadn't have ripped and sort of fallen behind, would Tia and Matt have sort of pulled back a little bit to sort of influence the ending? And I'm not saying that's wrong or, or whatever, but that shit's got to happen, I would imagine. Well, right? I think it oh, would sure. if, if they knew, but th- that's a lot of math. And like we have the, the convenience of sitting on our couch and hearing the announcers True. and seeing the leaderboard. Like I, I don't think Matt and Tia know who's – close to second or third they're just worried about first true but it would have been easy enough for you know o'keefe to say something like hey guys Haley needs to get third in this event you know or something like that knowing that she was going to get fourth if tia beat her i don't know i'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist you know me i just i like drama <laughs> well, i'm sure people talk about like like if brooke had had more of a chance i would imagine katrin would know exactly what needed to happen for brooke Right. Yeah. Like I have exactly. no doubt that that's something that Ben would talk about and they would know. Right. And st- strategize. Yeah. 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 Cause they're, they are, they're a team essentially. Yeah. So I, I was really excited for Carrie. Um, I was really rooting for Haley. Um, you know, Carrie was a guest on the show and whenever we have a, a guest on, like you always seem to like become more endeared to them uh, for the most mm-hmm. part. And, and so it was great to see her, and I'm really happy for her, and 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 that was really cool. Um, but I was rooting for Haley, but she's going to have her time. Um, so, yeah. So that the the female side didn't come out exactly. I mean, I did pick Brooke to win, and I look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> you picked Brooke to beat Tia. I yeah. did. You sure did. Just to be different. Okay. Yeah. Just, well, just because I'm tired shoot of the your same. Shot. Oh same, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I thought Brooke, I mean, Brooke looked really good in stage two. And I think um, she just looked mentally defeated a couple times. Like if you saw her at the end, like finishing, you know, your goal competition and knowing you didn't do your best, like going and knowing you did your best and maybe getting fifth, that doesn't feel as bad as knowing you really dropped the ball a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and she looked, she just, I think a couple times looked really mentally defeated. And even in the middle of workouts, sometimes like this isn't what's supposed to happen. And it's like, she couldn't quite get back on track. And that made me feel for her. Cause that's a terrible way to feel. <laughs> when I, I mean, was... I finished, I have finished regionals where I have like done well and like been really upset because I knew there were things that didn't go the way it should. And then had it gone the way it should, things would be different. And you just beat yourself up about that stuff. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine. Um, my, the reason I picked her is with the terrain of the ranch, I figured someone's going to turn an ankle. Someone's going to mm. like in Matt and Tia, they have, they have not got bit by that snake yet. And I was like, yeah. maybe this year because of the terrain and where it's at, I thought maybe one of them would go down. I picked Tia. Didn't matter which one of them I picked. I was going to be wrong either way. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. So uh, the other awards were uh, the rookie of the year was Justin Medeiros. Uh, he kind of won it just by making <laughs> He was the it only there. rookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but that was cool. Get to see him put the two belts across him like yeah. like a gunslinger um, <laughs> on the podium was pretty neat. And then the spirit of the games was Katrin David's daughter. Yeah, I was I thought they were going to give that to Noah. That was my prediction. But I was also thinking about athletes that weren't on the podium, mm -hmm. thinking that they would go more that direction. I think Katrin's yeah. a good choice. I think what they said about her is very true. Well, and when they put that video montage together, it was like she did all those things she's, that they said she yep, did. She's so. always smiling. She all, yep. Like when she goes out to the floor, she's smiling. Yep. Yeah. She may not be my favorite CrossFitter. Um, I, I don't know why she just, she just isn't my favorite. Wasn't who I wanted to see win it, but, um, but lo and behold, she did. And she does have a really, I mean, she has a great resume. Um, and probably deserves it. And I know we've talked to a couple of people who have won it and it, it means a lot. Like we've yeah. talked to people where it, that means more than a podium finish mm -hmm. uh, because of the I think it's speaking to your, it. It, yeah, it's speaking to your character and who you are as a person and yeah. like, you know, how you behave out on the floor and to your fellow competitors. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a big deal award. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, We've already got the prediction of Matt retiring by Cat. Right um, any other predictions for next season? You know, we have just to kind of finish up this last episode after the games. Um, we, we're going to have a new season next year. We know that. Don't know what that really is. Um, any bold predictions? Well, who did we talk to? We t I feel like we talked to somebody. Oh, we talked to someone recently who we said, did. who has sort of an inside scoop on what's going on. And he indicated that um, he thinks people are going to be very happy with the future of where the games are going and what the season's going to look like and things like that. It might not be this year, but maybe the next year or the year after. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm, I don't want regionals to come back. I know you guys are huge fans of regionals and want regionals to come back. Um, so we'll kind of see how it shapes up. We, the only thing we do know for sure is the Open starts February 18th. So that Thursday, February 18th is when they will announce their first workout um, and start presumably five weeks of the Open. I don't think they'll put the Open in October again. No. Yeah, I know. I think like it being forced to go back to this, they'll put it back where yeah. it always was and have some semblance of the type of season we're used to, whether it's regionals or they have sanctionals in a certain place or they do something different. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I like that better. I think it's unrealistic to have a season that kind of spans a full year to have sanctionals mm -hmm. all the time. I think that's unrealistic. I don't think it's good for people's bodies. I don't think you can expect. I mean, obviously this year was different having the games later, but I think no professional sport has like, you could have your most you know important thing that you make it to the final stage of something in November and you're not going to compete again until like October or September. Right. So yeah, it'll be having like see how the sanctions. real seasons is better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to say I'm, I'm, 
while I loved my, my time volunteering at regionals and working regionals, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of like everything happening in a cluster. If they can make the excitement of regionals at, at sanctionals where maybe the top three or the top five get in, in a, in a shortened season like Jenny was talking about, but spread out like, so there's something every weekend or every other weekend to kind of tune into but that excitement where you're trying to get to the top five to advance to something. So when I hear you say that, that sounds more like that's more exciting for spectators, but not necessarily for the athletes themselves. If there's something every weekend, like, I guess, explain more to me what you're talking about there. So instead of being forced to go to the central regional, you could pick to go to Wadapalooza okay. as your, shot to make the games okay. and you could pick another one if you wanted to um but it, you're not forced to go like all year round like from dubai in december to all the way through july july got it okay just a shortened window you got to get to pick and choose where you want to go and then more, not just the winner goes but like the top three or top five or something and not as many of them I think, right. you know, talking to someone at the gym today, I was coaching a class and talking to this guy, he's, you know, he's in his fifties. He really is a pretty good athlete. Um, and he was just talking about, he's like, I don't really follow it anymore. Like it was really fun and exciting when we could like go and we could watch you and the gym cared about the open. Cause I'll be honest, we don't really do the open anymore because it started to become something that, um, the gym wasn't involved in, you're not going to really have people go and compete and watch. And it started to become something that then people weren't as excited about. And so I do think that at least it was easier because I only talked to, there were probably like 10 total people at the gym that talked about the games at all this year. And so I feel like without having something where for the, you know, to go to regionals, people cared in gyms because maybe their score could count or, and I'm not saying obviously there's plenty of great things about the open that you can still push about it. But I, at least in my experience at friendship, part of what was exciting is people were excited for regional team or they knew they were strong. So maybe they could have a score count for the team and we'd have, you know, 50 people, 60 people come to open workouts. And it was like once like regionals like trickled away, like people like didn't care at all about open workouts. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, interesting. interesting. We never had a competitive gym for, for that. And so for us, we, we do a competition with the Open. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the community event uh, that our gym does. And we split the gym into four teams. And then everybody's score counts against the other three teams. Right. And, and, you know, we have pretty good turnout. Other, that October one is, I think, misleading uh, and, and is an outlier that just needs to be thrown away. It was just, that made it hard too. It was just different. Everything felt different. Well, high school football is going on here and that's huge. And high school football, Ohio state football goes going on here in Columbus at least, right. which we always did the open on Saturdays and no one wanted to do it then it just was very different. Yeah. I think so. it depends on your box too. Cause like you said, Scott, like oh, for the sure. boxes that I've worked at here have never been very competitive and the open was besides the one in October, the last one that we had in 2019 was like the biggest one that we'd ever had. I mean, it was crazy. Friday night lights, you have 70 athletes that you have to throw into heats, you know, for the night we'd go at four o'clock and you'd be done at like 10 PM. It was, it was nuts. It's fun and exciting for everyone. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think next year we will have a, a a new fittest on earth of one side. It, this just can't continue to go on. Both, Either. What's that? Well, that's because Matt's going to retire. Yeah. If they both compete. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I, know. I think we're getting some young talent uh, where Dave said that, you know, we're starting to get those, those CrossFitters that got into the sport by CrossFitting, you know, not the gymnast, the turn CrossFitter, not the, not the, you know, Olympic lifter that became a CrossFitter. We're getting CrossFitters now becoming CrossFitters. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be fun. Like the Haley Adams, the Justin Maderos. We had some young talent. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Samuel Quant won some events. I mean, and we've got Emma Carey. Yeah, she's going to be a badass. 
Yeah, she is. So, so I talked to Emma and Annika. Remember, we had Annika on too. I'm trying to find. Uh, so for Jenny, we had two teenagers on. Uh, Emma Carey beat Sam Briggs and Sarah Sigmund's daughter at Dubai. Uh, she's 16 years old. Yeah. Um, Beast. And has an engine like Sam. That's crazy. So um, Annika told me that um, she's, she's been working out all weekend too and like hasn't actually been watching, but is, is catching up as she goes because she's that serious of an athlete. Um, she's very fired up for Justin. She said that um, – uh, she and Justin were in similar situations as teens, I guess, meaning that they aged out sort of before they had that weird birthday thing where she only had one year in that 17 to 18 um, age group. She's loving the workouts. Um, she said she would love to see her French Canadian Jeff crush things because, um, you know, she's a Canadian. Um, and he, she said that he's a really nice guy. And then Emma, I'm not going to be able to find her as quickly to pull it up, I don't think. I, t I talked to Annika last night too, because she, um, or Annika, uh, she did one of the events, uh, the bar muscle up, yeah, uh, the bar muscle up event. Uh, and she was really excited about her time and how it compared. Um, now granted, she probably had less of transition space if I am going by the way she had it set up, but still at 17 years old to, to put up a number like that. She's crazy. Um, Emma told me that her favorite moment from day one was when the Dave told the athletes to run the course again. She said it reminded her that she's training to be physically and mentally prepared for anything. Um, facing adversity now is a good thing because it prepares you to respond rather than react on the competition okay. floor. So again, in typical mature Emma fashion, yeah. that's how she mature. responded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> very well, mature. for a very crazy year. Uh, it ended up being a pretty fun season. We got at least some competition to watch. You know, here's praying, hoping, good thoughts, good vibes, whatever we're putting out into the universe, um, that we have a COVID-free or at least a COVID-reduced season next year uh, where we can actually get back to some, some sort of um, a semblance of normalcy. So with that, guys, you know, thanks for jumping on. Um, if you don't have anything else to add, oh yeah, hashtag we thousand are subscribers. <laughs> hashtag a thousand subscribers. If we get to a thousand <laughs> subscribers, we can do different things with this podcast. Uh, we can go live at events. We can do some stuff. So we are really pushing, hit that subscribe button free of charge. Uh, if you don't want to be bugged by the notifier, don't hit the notifier. We'd love if you did, it'll tell you when we have stuff coming out, but just hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your family, just hit it. Uh, it'll bring, yep. help us bring you better content. Because we could have brought you like live as the events were going on today. Oh, that's um, so fun. In, instead of like after the fact. But, um, but we had fun this year. Uh, you know, we're coming up on our one year anniversary as a podcast. Sure. And uh, it's been a blast. And I can't wait for year two. We've got what, episode 80 coming up tomorrow? Coming tomorrow, yeah. Colleen cool. Fosh, we interviewed her live from Lake Placid, New York, where she is trying out for the USA bobsled team. Um, and she's doing really well. Uh, I chatted with her last night real quick just, just to see how it's going and let her know that it's coming out Monday. Um, and it's a great episode. Uh, if you don't know about Colleen, she it was an elite athlete her whole life uh, in different yeah. sports. Uh, CrossFit was just a step along that path. Um, a two-time games competitor, um, but now she's hoping to be an Olympian with USA Bobsled. So check that one out and we'll see you next time on the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. Bye. Bye guys. Yeah.